Greetings, I'm Tim, welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Omega DeVille Retropunt. You can see this stainless steel split second chronograph and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch with extra high res images, the accessories included with the sale, and of course, full pricing details for this timepiece. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This watch is kind of an example of what happens when worlds collide. The timepiece was released at Basel World in 2005 and it created a bit of a sensation being so aesthetically and mechanically different than anything else Omega was selling at the time. Uh, moreover, the watch combined modern Omega coaxial automatic chronometer watchmaking in the caliber 3612 with a case and a bezel combination that Omega described as richly influenced by its 1950s heritage. And indeed, this kind of fluted and stepped bezel design does have precedent in Omega's mid-century dress references as well as Seamaster references. But the combination of that case in this size with this extraordinary movement and a completely singular dial really sets these watches apart and they're instantly recognizable, even getting on more than a decade later. Now, the watch has a broad stance across the wrist. From lug to lug, it's 51.5 millimeters from extremity to extremity. These are strong lugs. They do flare outwards, so the watch doesn't have a quality of bending itself around the wrist. Fortunately, it's not completely oversized. It actually looks bigger than it is because of the drama in the lugs and the bezel, but it fits well on a 16 centimeter wrist like mine, and I would see even say down to 15 centimeters in circumference. Your wrist is gonna wear it well with a good sense of security and proportion, provided your wrist is more oval shaped than round. Now. In terms of thickness, the watch isn't exceptionally thick. Again, it looks bigger than it is. 15 millimeters thick, it does have a little bit of a step and curve to the bezel to help a tight sleeve ride up and over it, but mitigating against that is the outcropping retropont or split seconds trigger, which can get hung up on a tighter sleeve. Now the watch has impressive heft to it. The case is deep, the lugs are large, and of course the watch is paired with a full twin trigger deployant. More on that in a moment. But you can see due to the depth of the case and lugs. The watch is hefty, and this in spite of a display case back. Now the strap is very substantial. You can see how dramatically bolstered it is as it approaches the lugs. With a sheer cut to the flank, you get a great sense of the cross section of that immense black rectangular scale monotone stitch alligator leather strap. It's very handsome, as is the clasp. Now this is more of a general Omega piece, but smartly designed twin triggers ensures that this heavy semi sport style watch can't pop open or pull the clasp open by dint of bulk and momentum. Twin trigger security, and then inside, beautifully polished, no unfinished surfaces. You can see that the excess strap is tucked in and underneath the clasp, so there's no need for strap minders, and it's very clean when closed. Notice the absence of strap minder loops. Now, the case of the watch is best described as postmodern Baroque, taking a few styling cues from the 1950s, scaling them up and exaggerating them dramatically. The watch has a character that is all its own, completely unique. If anything, it seems almost like Omega riffing on Vacheron in the modern era. Now, the dial is one of several originally released with this reference, the Rattrapon originally featuring silver, black, and a special ruthenium dial, all extremely fetching. This is the sportiest of the three, featuring the classic tritone of black, silver, and shocks of red periodically applied. Now, there is an underlying logic to this incredibly flamboyant arrangement of civil time and sub-registers. This was one of the first applications of a triple date, and believe it or not, Omega did have a functional rationale for it, the idea being that if the minute hand did extend over the date, by seeing the preceding and succeeding date, you would know what day it is, even if the primary date were blocked. Now, in terms of the sub-registers, there's a lot going on. First of all, tonally, they dramatically changed the appearance of the dial, getting pretty close to a one-to-one -one ratio of silver and black. You also note the dramatic way that time is portrayed stylized applied Roman numerals for minutes and hours, and then overlapping tracks with different sized seconds indicators for the 60 seconds constant seconds indication at 9 o'clock. You'll note two tracks, each one with 30 seconds of duration. 
each one indicated by a hand of a different length. There's a lot going on here, but it's all of the highest quality. The primary hour and minute hands are loomed, so you can see the watch in low or no light. It has a little bit of a sports watch to it with the loomed hands and 100 meter water resistance. So you could take this one in the pool. You could take this one in the surf if you were brave enough on a textile strap or a bracelet. Now, of course, there is a split seconds function courtesy of the Omega Caliber 3612. This is an impressive movement that debuted a lot of technologies in a single package. Double column wheel, vertical clutch engagement, so the column wheel for crisp actuation, the vertical clutch for smooth actuation. So the column wheel is what you hear and feel. The vertical clutch makes the motion of the hands on the dial smooth. They don't jump when you start, they don't stagger when you stop, they reset precisely to the index of 12. Now there's more going on besides the twin column wheels here. There is a free sprung balance operating at four hertz. It is a coaxial escapement. It is a chronometer grade movement. It does have automatic winding and though it's based on the Frederic Piguet 1286. Nevertheless, it is finished in unique Omega fashion and again free sprung with a 4 hertz balance. It's a little bit different than the base caliber. It also has a little bit more power reserve than the base caliber. 52 hours versus the original 40. This is a lot of content. Add a quick set date and hacking or stop seconds and this timepiece is best described as a lot a lot of style, a lot of nuance, a lot of dial detail, and a lot of watchmaking chops inside the case. You can see and you can buy this extraordinary Omega DeVille Rattrapont on our website.